Yeah, she has an incredible story. She's the captain of the women's USA boxing team. Wow. And is preparing for the Tokyo 2020, which is now happening in 2021, of course, Summer Olympics. Ginny joins us now to share her inspiring story. Welcome to Houston Life, Ginny. It's great to see you. Hello, how are you guys? We're doing well, and you have a great story. A, a quick bit of background here. Episcopal High School graduate, you've been boxing for more than 10 years, and you were first at the 2020 U.S. Olympic team trials for boxing. So how does it feel to be the best? Oh, it feels great. Yeah, I've been uh, working, you know, to be at this top level since, um, you know, I graduated college uh, from LSU. That's where I started boxing, actually. Um, and when they announced that they were having women boxing in the Olympics for the first time for the, for, for the 2012 London Games, I made it my goal to get to the Olympics and win gold. And in order to get there, I mean, you just have to be so mentally strong. Tell us about your preparations and your journey, um, you know, to get to where you are today. Well, when, like when I graduated, I decided to put my kind of career on hold. I graduate, graduated with a BS in kinesiology. And, you know, I had to myself find um, a team that worked for me. And that's really hard in boxing because... You know, there's a lot of, you know, people you can't trust in this game or clash or coaches might clash with, clash with each other. But I found the perfect team and they made me the best I am today. And they got me to being the number one in the nation and, and actually ranked number three in the world right now. Your dedication. Um, and I just stuck with it. And, you know, I, I was number two for like almost four or five years before I finally beat the number one girl. And, you know, and I, I just, it's perseverance. That's what I learned from this, this sport. Perseverance and believing in yourself. And, and if you just stick with it and hard work pays off, you can get there. It certainly does. Listen, number two, number three, those aren't bad spots either, but it's great that you're at number one. I think it's also great, Jenny, that in this role now, you've got a lot of eyeballs watching you. When you were in middle school, you were diagnosed with what's known as obsessive compulsive disorder or OCD. And a lot of people sort of flippantly say like, oh, I'm OCD. And they're, and they're not actually, right? Describe right. to us just how serious this is, because for people like yourself who have been diagnosed, this can totally disrupt your daily habits I understand you sometimes you would wash your hands for half an hour at a time yeah uh, yeah so so there's different forms of obsessive compulsive disorder and mine's with contamination fear of contamination and I actually struggled with anorexia in middle school and my therapist actually found out that the root cause of my anorexia was my OCD so we, you know, we started to battle my OCD and I've been working on it, you know, since I was diagnosed and I'm still working on it today with my therapist. And over the past three years, it kind of has really taken a toll on me. But again, I always keep in my mind, like, you know, boxing has, you know, kept me um, been able to fight it and been able to live, you know, like a normal life or at least, not let my OCD take over my life. And yeah, I'll get stuck in my rituals and I'll be so focused in, you know, my cleaning habits that I won't even realize that it's been a couple hours and I could have been recovering or I could have been sleeping and getting, you know, um, being prepared for practice. And so I have to find a balance between that. And, and it's still a struggle today, still working on it, but I've been able to overcome you know these every little day battles with my with my ocd and still stuck with you know staying on top of my boxing you know you've called your bathroom your ocd prison and yeah. you know there could be someone out there watching today that might be going through the same issue uh that you were so what what are what is the advice that you have for them and, and what kind of tools can they put in their toolbox to overcome their own struggles Right, and a lot of people with OCD are ashamed or embarrassed or feel, you know, misunderstood. And I felt that way for a long time. And actually being a part of USA Boxing has helped me because I've had to travel with the team and, you know, I've had to live with, with my teammates for over a couple of months. So they, they started to see my habits. So 
I, I just decided, I was like, okay, I've just got to explain it to them. Otherwise, you know, they're not going to understand. And that helped me. Uh, opening up to my teammates and kind of explaining my struggle has helped me understand my struggle even more. And so that's kind of what I want people to do that, you know, who are struggling with something. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid to go to go out there and ask for help because there is help out there. And, and tool like the therapy and exposure therapy are the tools I use today to, you know, keep me on um, managing my OCD. And, and so if, if you, if you don't know where to find help, you know, there's foundations out there research that they can find, they can help you find the right kind of treatment you need. And it just, that's the main thing. Don't be ashamed, ask for help. And you know, it's okay, be open. Don't, you know, everybody has issues. Everybody has things they struggle with. Mm -hmm. You're not the only one out there. Chinny Fuchs, you are such an inspiration. That's fantastic advice. It is okay to ask for help. Absolutely. And uh, you're an inspiration, not just in the boxing ring. You are number one. We're going to be rooting for you. But thank you so much for sharing your story with us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Much All right. respect. Okay, stick around. Houston Life will be right back.